Hey everybody, welcome back to the Miser's Guide to Ebony. In this consultation video, I'm going to look at an account that is really quite far along in its development. And I'm going to try to pick apart some areas uh, that could be growth areas to improve. Um, I've already had some discussions with the account owner so that, you know, they, they kind of know um, where we're sitting right here and what could be improved. I'm going to just join a couple bosses for them. Um, I think I probably kicked them out to make this video, so I might as well do that. Um, we can get this one too. So I'm going to browse around and I'll just take a look at some of the areas. I did take notes on this earlier, so I knew what I wanted to talk about because with a, a keep like this, um, and an account like this, they're really so far along in their development that it's very specific areas that you have to look at for improvement. And it's not just, you know, glance around, oh, this and this and this. It's very specific things that I'm going to be looking for to help this player improve. Um, so the first thing I'm going to start off with is just to uh, take a quick glance at some of the key buildings. You can already see that their keep is up to 39. They're really far along in terms of uh, keep development. And there's a couple buildings that are lagging behind, but only by a level. So like Rally Spot is crucial, absolutely. And they know that. Um, that's why it's up to 38 right now. So I, I don't really have any concerns about the buildings. Um, the player right now is not a main rally setter in their alliance. Um, but I did talk to them about the potential of becoming one uh, based on what they have. And that's probably going to be a future goal. And when it is, one thing that they're going to want to do is work on their, uh, their Triumphal Arch because you do get that increase in uh, rally capacity. So uh, that's just at level one right now, the basic requirements. But eventually they're going to want to work that up. But they're focusing on other areas right now. And that is perfectly fine for their short term goals. Um, the only building of note that is, uh, farther behind than, than I'd probably expect for a, a, someone this far along is the wonder being only at two. That's where I'm at. Um, I'm at wonder two, but this account is a lot further along in terms of buffs and gear, and they definitely have the potential, much more potential than I do, even though I have a, a much greater uh, troop count. They have a much greater potential of getting that Wonder 3 done. So that is, in terms of building, going to be their uh, primary goal. Um, achieving that Wonder, getting that unlocked, getting their Nidhogg, and and, and that sort of thing. And that's that's a, a long-term goal, possibly, um, based on what I was discussing with them. But it is definitely doable. They can absolutely get that done. Let's move on to their Research and Military Academy. Um, I poked around in their research already, and really the research is fantastic overall. There's just a couple things that they're missing out of their uh, academy research, and I like. I think in the alliance tab, one of the things that I noticed was they had not uh, maxed off all their reinforcement tech, which is something that they're going to want to do. Yeah, over here, there's a couple that could be done. Um, these are very minor things, like reinforcing isn't really the meta anymore at keep 35 it was a lot more effective than it is now but at the uh, server age and the the kind of uh, opponents that this player is getting uh, being able to quickly reinforce somebody uh, when they're getting rallied is going to be beneficial it you know when you get into the the big leagues and there's players throwing huge rallies at you reinforcing reinforcing doesn't do a whole lot but for the, the kind of play that's going on at this player's level right now and the, the kind of opponents they have, it does. So that is something to get done. It's not the highest priority, but I'd say like a medium high priority. You probably want to do that fairly soon and just get that out of the way. Um, what else? The rest of this is pretty good. Um, I think in Military Advanced, there was one thing that I noticed too, and it was with that discussion of being a rally setter eventually, I would rate this slightly lower than uh, the reinforcing technologies that I just talked about, but getting, not this one, I mean, that's not a bad one to get, um, 
but getting these ones up, like the rally horn, the advanced rally horn, uh, increasing that capacity uh, is obviously something that you're going to want to do at some point, but it would probably be uh, a step below the reinforcement uh, research, but below getting that done. Uh, the rest of it looks fantastic. If you go over to the military academy, I'll just take a quick look there, but uh, from what I remember, they're doing great. Uh, there's really nothing much to say. Uh, they're skipping some of the ones that uh, are not crucial, and that's important. You don't want to waste all of your, uh, your scrolls and stuff on uh, something like this. Not that you won't do it eventually, but right now there are better things along the way. So they're skipping some of the right things, and they are uh, moving ahead, and they're pretty far advanced into every pretty much every one of these formations. Yeah, like I'm just scrolling through here, and you can kind of see that uh, it, these ones are, are are a little bit behind, but they're not as valuable as some of the ones that they picked up. So same thing with that reinforcing. They don't probably do a whole lot of reinforcing. I'm, I'm thinking that has to do with uh, uh, the troop count, and I'll, I'll get to that later. But eventually having that extra march and just throwing that in quickly when you know a rally's happening... Um, it, it can definitely be beneficial in getting some really easy points. Um, yeah, so their military academy is looking great. Um, I'm going to go to a couple battle reports here. Let me see if I can quickly join some other rallies because, yeah, there's a couple things going on here. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not saying an archer or something. Let's... Ooh... Okay. I'll skip those. All right. So I was on their. Uh, I was going to talk about their buffs and what I did see in their main PvP generals. So down here, this attack one here is an example of their. Um, it looks like a senior march that they did against a player, and it's with Simeon. So this is archer uh, focused here. And let's just take a look at their troop buffs here. Um, I'm going to have to blur some of that. But range troop at about 1,600, and the def defense about 1,000, HP about 900. That's pretty good. That's, uh, that, that's very good so far. So they've done some really great work on their uh, archer. And I'll take a look at their ground, I think. From what I saw, I think they really favor ground. Um, this rally didn't go so well. Uh, this was, what What did you send? Go forward here. Okay, they sent uh, Scipio. So yeah, it's what I thought. This is their, uh, their ground march and the rally itself didn't go too great. But that's not what I'm looking at right now because that's more of an alliance thing. What I'm looking at is this here. So I'm seeing that, uh, oh wait, this is not their buff. I need to go to, these battle reports suck sometimes. That's not, it uh, doesn't seem right. Yeah. I think I want to find a solo because sometimes those battle reports are kind of annoying. I'm going to look down, see if I can find a Scipio. Okay, that looks, that looks a little more reasonable. So this is probably where their uh, their buffs are at with their Scipio. 1249 attack, 1159 defense, and 982 HP. The HP is a little bit low for ground troops, uh, but the attack and defense are stellar. It's really, really strong. Um, so in that area, in those two areas, are archer and ground, there's very little work to do. And really focusing on those would be not the best choice right now because they're already well built. 
to to kind of give direction here on where to go with gearing at this point, you really want to get a focus on the other two that are lagging behind. Um, I didn't see very strong uh, reports for cavalry or for uh, siege, and that's pretty normal at 2.3 billion power. And I, I think they just added some troops recently because I, I think they were just below 2 billion. Yeah, they snuck up on me here. Um, but at that level of power, the amount of troops that you have are probably like one good march and you're done. Um, you're not going to have the amount of troops to keep slinging like some of the big dogs. Um, and you will get there. You will, you're hitting very, very hard. And, uh, and that's great. But you need to be able to hit with more than just two types. So that is a growth area that we talked about. Um, Let's take a look at the generals that they have currently. They have got a lot of actual quality generals, but the equipment, this is your the siege right now, uh, the siege equipment isn't strong. And I think a lot of them are just leftover mix match pieces that uh, they haven't worked on yet. Um, there's not a lot of civilization gear that's really focused on siege yet. So it's kind of just stuff stuff thrown together and uh, they know that uh, we did talk about that a bit so like the refinement on the uh, the axe here isn't isn't super strong there's a couple good ones but there's only two decent ones on there um, you know the ring or the necklace or whatever you want you want to call that freedom star not a good choice for siege we did talk about this one too we definitely want to have um, something that has siege range bonus on it and it was something that they were questioning as well. Yes, it has higher stats, but is it worth the trade-off? And the answer is no. You definitely want to get that siege rage range bonus. Even if that two-piece says attack and siege, it's not worth it. Even if the stats are great, it's not worth it. You need to get that range bonus. Um, so one of the alternatives here to this Freedom Star that we talked about was uh, putting on the Courageous Akimenide ring, and that will give... Um, some siege stats, but also most importantly that range bonus so that you are not getting picked off uh, by the opponent's siege. Some of the other pieces like the leg armor, yes it does have uh, all troops defense, which is, you know, you got to put it somewhere, right? It's not fitting on any of the other generals, so you can put it there for now. But the question is, do you really want to uh, spend a whole lot of gems and refining stones to build this up for siege and then potentially have to put something else on. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that way right now. Um, I would probably wait a little bit to see what the new civilization gear is going to look like. And in the meantime, I would probably sit with a solid set of um, Ares and Achaemenidae and stuff that I know for certain is usable. And then in the worst case that those things aren't usable, I, I can still place them somewhere else. But if you refine uh, something like your Freedom Hero for Siege right now, and then you figure out later that you want to uh, switch it to something else, well, you got to go through that whole process all again because you only get one piece of Civilization gear. So you want to you want to really be certain of what you're doing with those uh, because it is going to be very costly to fix any mistakes that you make. There are other pieces, and uh, I, I mentioned this as well, there are other pieces in here that you know for certain that it's going to be for that, uh, that uh, character. Like if you look at this piece, look at the Furin Kazan Bracers. The ground troop defense is 50%, marching ground troop defense 40%, marching ground troop HP 40%, march size. Does it make sense to move that to any other character other than ground? No, it would not be suitable for any other troop type. You know with 100% certainty that this piece will be on your PvP ground general. So it makes sense to do your best to get refines like this 29.3, 29.2, because this one is a forever piece. Um, and then you look at some other pieces that maybe are not forever pieces maybe this is going to be moved to something else. So focus on focusing on research, not researching, focusing on refining this piece 
makes less sense than it does on this piece. And don't get me wrong, you definitely want to refine it if you're going to be using it on that general. You don't want to have like no no refines or bad refines or something like that. You want to do it, but don't be too concerned with it not being perfect because it might not be a permanent piece. Um, and they wanted to go, I think, the six piece right here because it does, you know, the the two and the the two and the four get you these really nice marching, uh, well, the ground bonuses, and that's huge. And then if you get the six piece, you get enemy troop HP minus 25%. I actually see this as being a four piece set for ground with two pieces of something else. So eventually picking out what the weaker two pieces are and finding a two piece set that is going to complement that, that mix is probably where it's gonna end up with the, the Scipio, but right now he's fantastic. So you don't have to worry so much about improving him. And same thing with the Simeon. The Simeon is just looking great. Um, right now, most of it is uh, Plant Nugget. So you got four out of six pieces to get that Rally Capacity, which is which is great. Um, and then there's two-piece Freedom Hero. Freedom Hero does also seem kind of like it is a, uh, a set that is more directed towards range. But this piece does not. So, um, I don't know. You'd, you'd really have to play around to find the right match for you. Um, anyway, that's enough about that stuff. Let's go back to the Siege. So the Siege, the General itself, is a great pick. The specialties all worked out. and The only thing really missing is getting the correct gear. And, of course, we're missing the Dragon because uh, Wonder 3 is not there, so there's no... Uh, there's no available dragon for this uh, guy. Looking at the skill books, everything looked good too. You have that uh, siege range bonus. So if you have this book plus the ring, you're in good shape. If you're missing one of the two, you're not in good shape. Um, the other books look great. Okay, so this siege guy is a growth area for sure. But at the same time, this player is just a little bit over 2 billion right now. So they probably don't have the troops to do lots and lots of siege bombs. And the kind of players that this player is going to be playing against are not going to be 10 billion, where you have to be doing that to break down the uh, massive defenses that those players have built up. So is it important? Yes. Is it a paramount thing to work on right now? No, this can be a gradual plan to work up this general as time goes on. And I would really suggest waiting a little bit on it, like work on it a little, but wait uh, for some of these Civ pieces that might come out potentially and they're going to replace uh, a lot of what's going on here. But in the short term, throw on the Courageous Acumenide ring here. You can leave this one if you want. It's not, it's not a bad piece or anything. Uh, but or you could find uh, another piece to throw on there that you can work on the refines to have something. Um, but yeah, the siege the siege needs work. And let's go over to the mounted. The mounted was somewhat of the same. I don't know where the mounted general is, but it was kind of the same situation where it was a mix match of different things that didn't quite fit. Um, so they have Hannibal, an excellent offensive choice, fully worked out specialization. He's going to be, he's going to be unstoppable uh, with the right gear and right troops. He's going to be really, really strong. Um, all the refinement, like on the dragon and stuff, looks great. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good refinement. Um, it's just that some of these pieces are done really well, and then some of the pieces don't quite fit yet. Um, so Han Dynasty Halberd is not a bad choice. Uh, but I think they were really cautious in uh, refining and making that, like, like pulling the trigger, making that decision of should I go ahead and do the refinements or is that going to be too early to 
you know, to do that and I'm going to regret my decision. And what I recommend to this player and to pretty much everybody with those same kind of questions of the long term, do I refine it this way? This is what the general gear planner is for. So I, I made a tool quite a while back um, and I recently updated it to include civilization gear up to where about whereabouts we're at just before the Corio set. Um, and I'll continue to update it as things are released. But if you're not really sure what pieces you're going to put on each, the easiest thing is to go into the planner and just test different things. See what the base stats are going to be. Uh, it also considers the set attributes for, you know, if you have two pieces of this and four pieces of that, it's all going to be there. The only thing missing is refinement because that doesn't matter yet. So after you figure out what the base pieces are going to be in the long term, then you have that certainty and you'll be able to go ahead and do the refining that you need to do. These are, a lot of these are good long-term pieces. Like you can tell that the plant helmet is really set up for mounted. And yeah, there are Han pieces that are definitely uh, oriented for mounted troops. So there's some right choices in here. Um, just if you're not quite sure, uh, then, then probably play around with the, the tool first. Uh, you might find like, like, look at this. It's a, uh, I haven't really looked at this one so much, but you got the march, marching siege machine attack. You got march size capacity, uh, troop attack with dragon. That's not a terrible piece for your uh, your siege general, but is it going to be the best piece? I don't know. I, I really don't know long term because I don't know what the rest of the pieces are going to be. But that's better than the freedom hero. Uh, the only thing is you're going to lose the set attribute for the two out of six pieces because you have another Han piece, but is there another Han piece that you have that is potentially uh, better for Hannibal? Possibly. Um, it's really just using the planner and, and messing around and trying to find that right combination without doing it uh, and then refining and then being like, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, so mess around in a safe way first. Um, and in terms of refining, just refine the ones like do perfect refines on the ones that you know are no brainers, like the Furinkas on bracers for the, the ground, like things like that, that, you know, absolutely, this is a forever piece, focus on those. And the ones that are maybe they are, maybe they aren't play around a little first. And it's better to be a little safe because refining stones and the gems, they go really, really quick when you're doing that, that much refining. Um, you could, how do I say this? Um, you, I think, I think they actually mentioned this in an, an email too. One of the really smart moves that you can make with uh, Acumenidae and Ares is when you're trying to upgrade a piece, like say you have the fearless Ares leg armor and these refines are pretty good for mounted. Okay. But let's say you had like 21, 20, 19, 20. And you're like, I can do better. I can probably squeeze another 10% out of that for sure. What I would not recommend is locking a couple of them and then doing it uh, for 6,000 gems every time and refining. It's so costly that way. It's a lot more cost effective to craft a brand new piece of Fearless Ares leg armor and then refine with no locks and just be extremely picky the second time around. And only stop for that 24.5 or that 25 or the 24.1, something that is nearly maxed. And then lock that and continue. And that way, in the meanwhile, you haven't screwed anything up. You still have a very usable piece. And in the background, you're working on another piece that, when it's ready, will replace this one. And this one can go on a different general. That's a nice thing about Ares and Achaemenidae pieces because you can have multiple. And that's perfectly fine. But it doesn't work with civilization gear because you only have that one piece. So you want to do the right thing early. Um, what else do I want to say? Okay. So we looked at generals, we looked at gear a little bit. Um, I did talk to them about being a rally setter in the future. And uh, they did express an interest in that 
Um, they they said that what they're really waiting on is uh, having general like uh, Tomiris, where the specialty is uh, worked on a bit so that you have you know what you need, like the rally capacity increasing that here. So when the specialties worked out here, then you could throw on like Plantagenet or something like that to increase it. And then boom, now we're ready to go. Uh, and you can be a rally setter at that point. So it's a long-term goal, uh, but that is a goal. So that was, uh, that is something uh, that I did want to mention in this video too, but we did speak uh, about it before. It's usually what ends up happening is if you, uh, if you're a rally setter like that, you're going to have a slight loss in your own personal buffs, but the increased capacity uh, makes it a huge gain for the Alliance. So slight personal loss, but a big rally gain. Um, all right. This I did have a couple small notes too. Uh, they're very, very minor, but uh, uh, it might help uh, other people out there that have these generals and want them to be effective because they... It is an effective, uh, it, it is important for growth. Not when you coin a whole lot and you get a lot of resources, but I, I did notice, for example, that the bay bars here, you have bay bars for double drop and you use them, or I, I, I assume you use them. Um, they have their rings on for double drop, but I did notice that they're not five starred, which means that they have lower stats, which isn't a big deal because you're not killing stuff. So you don't have to worry so much about the stats, um, but if you do have the uh, the badges or the medals or whatever the heck they're called to enhance these, which yeah, you definitely do, uh, then I would recommend at, at some point five-starring them and uh, potentially, oh, I don't have your code, potentially increasing their leadership stats so that they get to and from bosses much faster. Now, I'm guessing that the reason that's not done is obviously not the 20 or 200, sorry, 200,000 of these medals. I, I'm, I'm assuming it's not that. I'm assuming it's you're a little gold starved. And that makes sense because technology takes a lot out of you. And until you really get to the end of that technology, then you're constantly going to be consuming that. You are going to be using gold for your... Uh, for your other stuff too, like, uh, well, I mean, you got so many generals going on. Um, you have research going on. You have uh, tier 14 troops, your craft, like there's a lot of gold uh, requirement because you're pretty new in terms of uh, your server age. But yeah, eventually get to that point. And it was the same thing I think I saw with your... Uh, uh, your Queen Jindiox, I think they weren't fully done either. Uh, I'll just take a quick look. They didn't have, and this is actually a really easy solution. If you do gathering, or if you want to be, if you don't want to long-term uh, use coining for, oh, you already did what I was saying. Um, I think they were naked. And uh, Queen Jindiox, I'm sure she looks great naked, but she's not a great gatherer. So throwing on some champions gear and getting that extra resources from gathering and even going in here and doing some refinement um, and just getting a little bit of uh, gathering speed on your helmet and your champion's legs. And then on, well, this one should probably be a, a king's sword or an axe. Um, getting some gathering speed on there as well would be beneficial if you want to uh, move away from spending too much. Oh yeah, here's a, a naked Jindyak. So it's something to work on. Um, not, not a big one, um, but little minor things do help over time. Uh, increased gathering is increased resources for troops and you get the point. Uh, let's see. I, I remember looking at your subordinate cities and they did look pretty solid overall. Um, I do notice that uh, you're like me in that you have a lot of rushes. So it's it's good defensively, absolutely. Uh, but over time, you're going to want to try to convert those, whether by trading or what, to uh, Japanese subs. Because at Keep 35, I would say that the game was a lot 
more defensive. Like you could do a lot defensively. And it was really, it was, it was so much defensive that it was really cheesy. And a lot of players would just max reinforce and just sit there like turtles. And it was a pain in the butt and you needed uh, lots of rallies to break players. It was, it was a pain. And usually attacking meant you would have net loss, net loss, net loss, and then you would have net win and net gains, right? And you would barely come out ahead on a lot of bigger players. That's no longer the case. Uh, at this point, with the rally size increases and march size increases, I mean, you can you can have like a 40-something million rally that could potentially zero someone all the way up to 10 billion power. I haven't seen that big yet because I haven't seen rallies completely filled yet but even myself it used to take me uh it used to take uh five six rallies at keep 35 to uh to break me and get me zeroed without much reinforcements it, it depends on the alliance but between four to six was the average um and my account hasn't changed a whole lot since december since keep 40. now I can be zeroed in one hit in Battlefield. Uh, and it's not even a full rally. Like 30 million out of 40 something million is enough to zero me at 5 billion power in one hit. Just straight up archers, boom, dead. So is it a defensive game anymore? Not really. Eventually you're going to want to con uh, uh, to convert those rushes. That's basically my short story here. Um, if, and I think that in the long term, it might balance out a little bit, like when people reach uh, the cap and they start mass training troops and then you have bigger layers and bigger uh, bigger amounts of troops, then you might be able to be a little more defensive, but that's such a long ways away, really. Uh, so in the meanwhile, in accomplishing some of those goals, like uh, getting your Wonder 3 and getting into All-Stars, getting those dragons offensive would be a lot more effective. All right. Um, I did look at your dragons. Your dragons look very solid. Uh, I know you're still working on... That's not the dragon cliff. You're still working on some of the talents, but, uh, you know, you've got a lot of them maxed and uh, a lot of the important ones maxed and, you know, down here too. So... Everything is looking good. The refining is looking good on your dragons. It's it's great. Uh, your biggest growth area right now, from what I see, is in your troop count, and you knew that. Um, you were, I, I mean, I, I I swear my, I I feel like you were one point seven million, but it might have been somebody else, uh, and, and then you just grew. I don't know, man. Yeah, I feel like these numbers are slightly higher. Maybe I'm imagining. But regardless, even at 2 billion, 2.3 billion, it's still, you know, that's a big number for a lot of people. But for someone that's going to be very competitive and working into All-Stars, it's not a big number. Your troop count is very, very small. Um, and that is going to be the biggest factor moving forward in uh, whether you're going to be qualifying for All-Stars, whether you're getting enough points, whether you're going to unlock that Wonder 3. Your Archer General and your Ground General are so strong that if you had the troop count to use them efficiently and effectively, you would have made the, the All-Stars without much, much of a challenge. If you were double this, you probably would be... You, you'd be good enough for that. Um... So my short-term suggestions here, and something I already mentioned, is bring these T14s up to about 1.5 million of each. And this is just the short term. Eventually, you're, you're going to want to go higher. But in the short term, bring those up to about 1.5. Um, bring your tier 13s up to about 2 million or so. And since your ground and your archers are really the ones you're going to be slinging the most, because you're so strong in those areas, bring those ones up to at least 2.5. Uh, your tier 11s and your tier 12s. This is where 
the troops are a lot more effective because when you're getting rallied and so on, it's your tier 14s and the 13s that are going to take the beating. And often you'll find that tier 12 and tier 11 do quite a bit, especially in big numbers, because they don't take all that damage. So they get to, you know, dish out all their damage and they're very effective. So you're going to want to bring these numbers up as well. So your tier 12 and your tier 11s, at least 3 million. And so I, I see that your tier 12 is pretty good right now. Your tier 11 needs uh, quite a bit of work. The tier 12 archers and grounds, just like I said with the tier 13, these are the, okay, the archers and the ground here, there. These are the ones that you're going to want to bring up because you'll be using them in rallies. So these ones, not 3 million, these ones are probably five, but the other two here are probably fine at three for now. And then here, bring these guys all up to a minimum of three. But I would say your uh, your tier 11, your mechanical chariots, the siege should probably go up to about five as well. Um, your tier 10 and below doesn't have to be as big. One million is probably plenty. Maybe two if you're feeling like you want to increase your layers a bit. Uh, but... It, it's it's not too uh too crazy to you don't need to get like five million and stuff like the other ones it's really that it, it's kind of like a hump right you want to have uh, a really solid foundation those layers and then the middle range the tier 11 the tier 12s you really want to go up high and then and then it kind of slope downs a little bit with the 13s and 14s um Small note here, and it's a, a note for pretty much everybody out there too. I did notice that the preset for joining rallies, I think this is a preset. I don't know if I don't know if it was fixed already, but it's set to one archer. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but I found that it's a better idea to change that to a ground troop or to a cavalry troop. I mean, you can do tier one too. Uh, the reason is, I, and this is my speculation, when you're encountering bosses, when you're joining a boss uh, a boss rally, let's say somebody's rallying like a, a tier 14 boss or a tier 15 boss, where they would get zero wounded, normally they might get a couple thousand or it might be even worse. Um, the logic behind that, I think, is because the battlefield size changes depending on to what the the actual range of the troops in, on, on battlefield are. So if everybody's sending cavalry or ground, it's going to be a smaller battlefield so that those troops will reach the boss faster. But if you put one siege in there, or maybe even an archer, the battlefield goes like this. And the troops that would have to cross the battlefield to get to the boss, well, now your siege has attacked the boss and the boss is engaging and it's starting to damage units already but your guys haven't gotten to the boss and gotten all their their, their damage out and killed the boss in one shot. Um, and I, I don't know how accurate that is, and it's kind of a simplified way of explaining it, but here's the simple way, the simplest way. Cavalry, ground, good. Siege, archer, bad. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to stop there. Uh, we don't need to uh, do too much speculation on boss mechanics and stuff. It's just observation. Um, it just seems to be more wounded when you use archers or siege. Okay. And it's not always the case. I mean, some people that are very strong, it won't matter because they have really high mounted HP, but it could. So very easy thing to fix. All right. Uh, one other area that I looked at here were talents. And it's not something I usually look at. I was just kind of curious because you're Monarch level 40. So I wanted to see what your talents were like. So I'm going here into your talents tab and I notice that you have an everyday set and you have a PVP set. And that's fine. This is your PVP set and this is your everyday set. Uh, that's fine. I would recommend that uh, if you're going to start doing bosses too, it doesn't look like you have a large pool of uh, of 
well, cavalry, so you probably don't do a lot of bosses, but if you do plan to, or if you are doing some, then I'd recommend getting Mortality. Um, you have it in your PvP set, but it's not really convenient to swap back and forth like that. It's kind of clunky. Um, so if you had to redesign this, let's see. If I were going to change yours to be like an everyday talent set, and then this one to be a PvP set, PvP set I'd probably do Offering, Mortality, Archer Tower, Healing Cost, and then whatever. Then Resource Critical, uh, Gathering Boost, Troop Upkeep, and then the next ones aren't really relevant for the everyday stuff, so whatever you want there. And then probably Monster Hunting here. And then on the other tab for uh, the PvP stuff, March Speed is important. The next two aren't super important. You want to get to your rescue though. Uh, rescue is is something you probably want for your main PvP if you do it, uh, like if you participate in server and if you do world map stuff, uh, you, you probably want that. It's just a nice little thing to have. Uh, nothing really in level 18. Subordinate city attack is important. Uh, nothing important here in terms of PvP. Fatal Strike, yes. In city HP, sub city HP, and yeah, the rest looks pretty good. Um, so this is very different from what I do, and it's not that there's a right way to do it. I mean, the whole point of these talent trees is to kind of like make you pick something and to not make it easy, because if there was just a cookie cutter build, everybody would do the same thing. Um, the advantage of this way that, that I've kind of seen with yours is if you have your everyday one like this, then you don't really have to make that decision at level 40 whether to go uh, monster hunting or subordinate city defense. Um, but the disadvantage of this setup is that if you do have a bubble drop or, or whether it's in server to server or something like that and you have your everyday one on, then you are missing out a lot on things like in city HP, subordinate city HP. You have a lot of reduced buffs that could have protected you otherwise and made you more effective defensively if you have that kind of oops moment that could potentially happen. I'll go through real quickly what I prefer to have as my talents just because I haven't really talked about this in any of my, my previous videos. Um, I prefer to have a PvP slash boss killing kind of set and then my occasional uh my occasional set that is things like on troop train day or you know that that kind so i'll kind of go through that quickly um, i would do offering i would do mortality um, so this the one i'm talking about right now is my pvp slash boss killing one so offering mortality the next one doesn't really matter. I usually go with uh, Archer Tower. Um, and then I go Healing Cost. Um, then I would, I have to go Resource Plunder, not because I actually use it, but I need to get to the other side. So I go Resource Plunder, Subordinate City Attack, um, Gathering Boost, Troop Upkeep, In City HP, Subordinate City HP, In City Attack, subordinate city defense. So that set gives me pretty much everything I need for PVP, battlefields, um, and also it gives me all the important ones for bosses, and I've got my gathering for my everyday gathering. Now I'm missing out on a few other things, like when I get to Monarch 40, which I'm not, um, I won't be able to do this. I won't, I'll won't. i lose out on a 10% increased troop attack on, on monsters. But it's not the end of the world to me, and that's what I mean. The disadvantage of that one is you have to make a choice here. But I feel like the advantages heavily outweigh that. Uh, that's just my opinion, though. My other set for the one that I'll swap to on troop train day or that sort of thing, um, I go... So the other one was starting with offering. This one I go march speed, um, and I go resource production... I go research speed, troop load, um, 
what do I do next? Doesn't really matter at this point. I usually go subordinate city troop training, resource critical, training speed, troop upkeep, training capacity. And then at this point, it becomes kind of like, well, I, I might as well just put the same stuff. Subordinate city HP and city attack, subordinate city, in case somebody tries to, uh, to hit me or something when I'm clearing somebody, I don't know. Uh, these ones aren't particularly useful because usually I'll just go to this one so that I can do my training or my opening of uh, opening of items and so on. And then I'll eventually just go back to my main everyday one. So I use this almost all the time. And then this one I'll use very occasionally. That's, you know, just the way that I do it. It's just some thoughts. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, any other things we can talk about here? So we've looked at your buildings, your research, your gear, your buffs, that all looks great. Uh, we've talked about equipment and planning and refining your generals and your dragons are fantastic. Um, what else? Um, I think I think we're pretty good here. Um, if you do have any further questions, just, you know, message me on Discord. You have me on Discord. Uh, and I think we talked about a lot of the other questions that you had separately. Um, and I responded to those. But for everybody else, I think that uh, it does give an idea of an account that is really far along. Um, even in an account that is really far along, there are areas to work on. So the primary areas just as a summary to work on here, um, getting that cavalry and that siege general set up, even if it means just Achaemenidae and Ares for now, uh, as you make your decisions and plan for the future. Um, but most importantly, definitely working on that troop count. And I would even say that the, like you could push to keep 40, you could do it. Absolutely. I mean, you're a keep 39 already. You can definitely push to keep 40. Um, but I think that you'll get more benefit from pushing troops instead for a while and just sticking here. I mean, I would even uh, I would even suggest to a lot of people out there, if you're looking for a place to stop and grow for a while, if you're in a similar situation, keep 38 is probably the right place to go. I mean, there's a lot at keep 38 that you can do in the military academy. You can go pretty far. It gets really good. And you're going to be working at that for a while. So, and then when you get to the end of that, then maybe it's time to move forward. Um, but Keep 38 is a good place to stop for a little while and work on your troop power if you're low on troops. Um, if you get your troop power up and you already have your generals and they're, they're as strong as they are, you have a much greater chance to get your Wonder 3 unlocked, to get into the All-Stars, and those are kind of like a, you've done it and it's unlocked. Whereas if you get to keep 40 now, it's not going to be crazy different than if you get to keep 40 in two months. It, nothing's going to stop you from crossing that threshold. Whereas if you get to keep 40 now and you're still behind on troops, you're going to continue to struggle to uh, get your Wonder 3 unlocked. It's going to get harder and harder because a lot of other players are going to be growing too. So push yourself ahead in terms of troop counts, since you already have your generals in a good place, try to get those unlocks. And then you might, you, you might find it uh, that with those dragons, you'll be even stronger, and it'll become easier and easier. Just some thoughts there. Uh, I do think that uh, right now at only 2.3 billion or 2 billion or 1.7, whatever, it's going to be really hard to qualify for all-stars, even though you have quality generals, just because of lack of troops. I mean, the amount of healing speeds you're going to need to continually heal and heal and heal, and you'll be the target of rallies again and again. Like, it's it's doable. You can do it. But man, is it expensive. And I don't know if it's worth it where you could have just doubled your troops, and then you wouldn't need half as much um, to get your Nidhogg. That's about all I've got here. Uh, like I said, we can communicate, continue to communicate on Discord if you have more questions. Uh, but for the purpose of this video and for the people watching this video, I think that
That is plenty. Who knows how long it is? A couple hours already? 49 minutes? Yeah. All right. I think that's plenty. That's going to give me a, a lot of blurring that I'm going to have to look for. Okay. I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you appreciated this consultation video. And if you are looking for a consultation of your own, then all you got to do is send a, an email to themiserevany at gmail.com. And uh, I can give you more information about that. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.